Welcome to the interview of the film Tale of Tales, directed by Matteo Garoni, and which is opening the competition at the 68th Cannes Film Festival, the official competition. Hello, Matteo. Welcome to all of uh, the uh, actors and actresses here, all of the kings and queens you have with you, princesses too. Welcome, Salma Hayek to, uh, to Cannes. Vincent, Toby, welcome. Toby, Toby Jones, Baby Kay, Kay, welcome uh, also. Uh, Toby, uh, thank you for being uh, with uh, us. Uh, well uh, done, everybody. Uh, Matteo, how did you get the idea for making this film? I know that Giambiesta Basile comes from Naples. Was it because you wanted to talk about Naples culture that you wanted to do this film, or did you want to just change your style and get people to use or get yourself to use your imagination? Take the mic. Credo che nel mio percorso artistico ci sia sempre stato un elemento fiabesco, anche nei miei film precedenti. Soltanto partivo dall'osservazione della realtà per poi trasfigurarla in una dimensione fantastica. Questa volta ho fatto il percorso inverso. Sono partito da un viaggio fantastico, meraviglioso di Basile, da dei racconti di Basile stupendi, per poi portarli in una dimensione più reale, più realistica. Mm. En fait, um, there's always been an element of fables in my different films. In the past, I've started with uh, reality and I've given it a fantastic um, uh, Aspect. I've done the opposite here. So how did you decide to work in English with an international crew? Diciamo che in in Basile c'è essendo un autore del Seicento c'è un elemento shakespeariano. Quindi pensavo che l'inglese si potesse sposare bene con con questi testi e potesse anche dare finalmente a Basile una riconoscibilità universale mm -hmm. perché non tutti sanno che Basile è l'autore, il primo a scrivere di Cenerentola è il primo libro di fiabe che sia mai stato scritto in Europa e tutti conoscono i Grimm Oui. Comme Basile is a 17th, or was a 17th century author, and I could see a link with Shakespeare, and I thought that English would therefore be the best language. And it was also a way of giving Basile uh, an international uh, spotlight there, because very few people that his fables um, inspired other European fables, including the story of Cinderella. <laughs> this time, uh, I got foreigners to come to my country. So I've remained very true to my roots. Were you familiar with uh, Giambattista Basile before you started working on the film? How did you discover the universe and what was your reaction? I discovered it through the eyes of Matteo. And um, it's very interesting because I'm very visual when I read something. Mm. I always look at the right. images. And this was a very humbling experience because once you get to the set, nothing you could have possibly imagined in your head right. became what was on his head. Right. He is uh, he's a painter. Right. He's an artist. C'est vrai. And um, he has a very, very interesting aesthetic. Yeah. And, and you could not discover this part of his aesthetic in, in the other films. Yeah. So That's every right. day was very exciting. It was a discovery. He would discover it there. And he would use us as pieces of the brush, you know, <laughs> and move us and change it and repaint it yeah. until he was happy with the painting. The process. Yeah. Of, of, of working with him mm -hmm. was like being a, a, a color in a brush mm. that kept transforming, transforming until the artist said, okay, it's, it's finished, it's, it's ready. So it was a very, very interesting ah, yes. process. Indeed, and you like painting. I remember you did the film about Frida, a Mexican artist, and you have painted yourself. Vincent Cassel, this uh, universe reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. I'm sure it's the kind of thing which appeals to you. You look very comfortable with that uh, universe. Is that one of your favorite uh, environments? Well, I wouldn't say I'm particularly attracted to fairy stories. What I was interested here in was the completely off-the-wall nature of these stories. And the role which Matteo gave me is a role uh, which is almost a 
comedy role, although the overall tableau is rather dark. There are, it's, it's uh, exciting, it's thrilling, and there are no goodies, there are no baddies, they're just people who are trying to deal with their own problems. It's a, a unique film, and I just wanted to be part of that. Indeed, it is a very unique uh, film. We've been talking about uh, fairy stories, uh, kings, queens, but it's, uh, queens, but it's also a very modern story. Bibi, you could be a modern-day princess, although you're fighting with ogres. How do you see your role as a princess? Is it not a current princess? We're talking about emancipation nowadays. Well, um, I suppose what I like most about the role is that she's very relatable to a modern audience and the fact that she starts off like any adolescent craving right. and yearning for freedom. But actually, when she gets her taste of it in the outside world, she has to discover reservoirs of strength in herself that yeah. she didn't really know that she has. Um, and so the fact that I got to uh, portray a character who comes of age, mm. in a way, was something that I could relate to directly. And so even though she's a princess, Matteo made every effort to make her character, you know, what I was able to <laughs> portray as real as possible. It didn't feel like a detached person. I, I, oh, yeah. She was a human. So yeah. that was um, very yeah. exciting for me. Yes, I can imagine, because it's a crazy uh, world. Toby Jones, you play a great role also. You're very uh, convincing, as is Bibi. And we believe that in this world, how did Matteo guide you to make it also very convincing? Um, well, it's the first time I've had to fall in love with a flea. It, it, that, was the thing that, uh, that, was, that was one of the things that attracted me to the to the part to begin with. But I suppose uh, what I loved about uh, the story that I was in was it, it did feel that although, as Vincent was saying, it's a chaotic, fantastical world, there was some crazy fable. There was some crazy instructive mm. thing mm. going on in our story that some lesson mm. was being learnt and some punishment is being meted out. <laughs> but it was so crazily structured that it was, uh, I'd never read anything like it. It felt, it had the chaos of modern life, really. <laughs> yes, falling in love with a flea is not a very common occurrence. Matteo Garone, uh, I thought of Pasolini's earlier works. He worked with fables, particularly the first shots we see when people are walking on the screen. Did you have that idea in your head? Was Pasolini in the back of your mind? Oui, surtout le court-métrage, oui. l'interview par la lune, etc. Ou oh, c'est la ciuccellini. Mm. Ou oh, les oiseaux, c'est la ciuccellini. Si. Et puis, un, un regista de, de genere, comme Mario Bava, mm. oui. qui est un regista qui a fait le genre en Italie, et c'est extraordinaire. Donc, c'est ah. un film qui eh, nasce avec le désir d'être un film de genre pour le public. Ecco, come erano i racconti di Basile, perché i racconti di Basile nascevano per puro intrattenimento. Mm. Yes, uh, John Mario Bava's films, he's very famous in Italy. He, he, it's, a, it's a genre focusing on stories like Basile's. How did you create the monster? Because it's particularly frightening. You're, you're mon are they your monsters that you're describing on the screen? Yes, yes. Beh, era tutto in Basile. Tutto era già nel testo. Everything was already written down by Basile. It was already created. Salma, hai accetto questa questa che vuole assolutamente. Salma, you are a queen. You want to have a baby. That's a very modern day concern. Women are prepared to do all kinds of things to have a baby. You can identify with certain elements of the different characters in in Vincent's person character and your own. Yes, I think uh, what makes it amazing, the film, is that it all starts with um, real conflicts that humans have still today. That's also what makes it contemporary. Mm. And it starts with conflicts that we can all relate to, and then it, it takes them into the madness. But every time we go to the madness, there's a really interesting, disturbing psychological thesis behind it. <laughs> Um, I, I can't believe that he was talking about the obsession for women to stay young, you know, in, 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 the, in, in the 17th mm. century. Mm. Oui. And uh, so, you know, 
it's it's it talks about all these different to me it's a movie that talks mostly about women mm. and our main concern and this is the the one part when he called me about the movies there is three stories about women that are very today and they become one in a way the the minute he said there's th three stories about women without reading the script just knowing that it was him <laughs> He could have stopped talking. <laughs> I, I was in. It was very exciting. Je comprends ça. Ça doit être un peu la même chose pour. pour I'm sure that was the same et, thing et for pour, Vincent uh, and for équipe, all of the uh, other merci, members of the crew. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming in to talk about Tale of Tales. You're going to go on to the press conference now. Toby Jones, BB Cave, Vincent Cassel, Salma Hayek, Matteo Garoni have an excellent festival, and we will see you, Vincent, on Sunday for another film, Morwa. In a few moments, there will be the press conference for. Tale of Tales.